Welcome to the Elliott High Network. I'm your host, Sola Wardell. The Washington Teachers Union has launched a major initiative called Learning Doesn't Stop, Lessons on TV. Let's check out Ms. Rachel Thomas from Bunker Hill Elementary School. Ms. Thomas will be discussing persuasion versus opinion writing. Lesson 2 will be conducted by Ms. C. This lesson will discuss visual arts district-wide. Take it away, ladies! Before we get started today, remember to stay home and stop the spread. Continue to wash your hands with warm water and soap. Just like last week, I will be referring to items from both the 4th and 5th grade learning plans. Last week, we worked on really good reading habits, but today we're going to shift and we're going to focus on how to be authors. We're going to focus on writing. Let's get started. Hi, 4th and 5th graders. I am Mrs. Thomas, a 4th and 5th grade ELA teacher from Bunker Hill Elementary School. Thanks for joining me again today for another discussion on revising, editing, and two types of letter writing. Let's get started. When you're revising, you want to remember that it focuses on the content of the paper. When you are focused on the content of the paper, you are reading the paper not only out loud to yourself, but also in your head, because sometimes you want to make sure that it reads as it should. When you are editing, there are a few tips that I want to help you with. My first tip is that you should write in a different color than you actually wrote in. So, for my editing marks cheat sheet, I wrote in the color red, but you can use any color that you choose. First up on the editing marks cheat sheet is delete. If you use a word twice in your writing, or you used a word that you may not necessarily need, you can draw this squiggly line to delete it. You can draw an upside down V if you need to insert an item such as this. I miss the bus today. I misspelled that, so I need to add an ED. So I missed the bus today. When you're using these items, you could focus on just reading your paper and focusing on what you need to delete at first, or you can choose another one that you need to focus on. When you capitalize, you want to put three lines under the first letter that needs to be capitalized. You also can make sure that you are capitalizing the beginning of your sentence as well as your proper nouns. The beginning of this sentence is, he went to the game last week. The capital needs to be the H. Next we have love. Make this L lowercase. I put a, a line through it and I would also could use LC. I love butter pecan ice cream. If it were a spelling mistake or a spelling error, I would circle it and put SP. If you have a dictionary available to you, you can look up the word or you can ask someone how to correctly spell it. Lastly, we have add punctuation. This is obviously a question. How did the audition go? I didn't have any punctuation, so I needed to add a question mark. When you are working, make sure you add the appropriate punctuation to the sentence. Now remember, this is a process, so you'll have to do each of those steps a couple of times. When you are done revising, you then move into your editing. But as you see the arrows, they move back and forth because it is a process. So when you're done editing, you can then rewrite and prepare yourself to publish. Remembering back to determining who your audience is, when you publish, you're going to determine who's going to see the work that you've written. You did it. You're a published author. Great job. Publishing for the time being may also mean who you let read your work. So show mom and dad or whoever's in your household. They would love to read it. Congratulations. You finished your TFQ. Let's move on to two more styles of writing, opinion writing and persuasive writing. Remember, you learn about how authors write for three distinct reasons, to entertain, inform, and persuade. So today, you're going to be an author that writes to persuade. But you need to appeal to someone's logic, which is their thinking, their ethics, which is their moral code, and their emotions, how they feel about something. The goal is to change someone's mind, to convince someone to do something, or to make someone believe in something that they're currently not. If you are following along in the fourth grade learning plan, this is the product menu for week three. 
It provides three different activities that you can complete that require you to provide a persuasive uh, product. Let's get into the outline. When persuasive writing, you want to make sure you cater to your audience. Consider who you are exactly writing to. For example, the fourth graders have the option to write a letter to a book publishing company persuading them why they should publish more books about women in the revolution. Or they can write an essay explaining why and how women should be remembered for their contributions to the fight for independence. These are different methods to persuade someone to do something. Regarding the quick outline, you need to determine your topic and audience. Because again, when you're writing, this could be for any topic that you want to write about. What your persuasive topic sentence, your reason, you may be able to provide evidence. You want to add a transition sentence to your second persuasive topic sentence, your second reason, and then the persuasive action desired. What do you want to obtain or gain from your writing? Then lastly, you write a conclusion, rewording your main idea and your overall reasoning for this paper. When writing persuasively, you want to make sure that you appeal to the five senses by using descriptive language. You also want to use powerful words such as need, want, change, deserve, disagree, desire. And there's many more. If you have a dictionary at the source, you can look up a few more. Also, you want to use transition words between paragraphs to organize your writing. Lastly, be clear about what you want. Provide a solution to a problem and have a strong closing. In the fifth grade learning plan, in the product menu, there's an opportunity for an opinion writing piece and a persuasive writing piece. Let's get into the opinion writing. Writing out an opinion paper, you want to make sure that your position is clear, whether you like something or dislike it. You also want to make sure that you provide evidence to support. Maybe you had a bad experience, or maybe it was the best time of your life, but you want to make sure that your readers understand your position clearly. It's also important to understand there is no right or wrong to an opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So when you're writing your opinion piece, don't feel pressured to write what's popular. If you like something that somebody else doesn't really like, maybe sharing how and why you like it will change their mind. Now again, it's not necessarily a persuasive paper, but informing someone on a certain topic may change their mind regardless. When sharing your opinion in writing, you want to make sure through word choice that your reader understands your position. Let's talk about the outline. Determine your topic and audience again. State your opinion in the first topic sentence. Provide evidence for that reasoning. Then for your second one, transition to another reason for your opinion. Provide evidence for that reason. You can include another reason for your opinion with evidence or you can transition to your conclusion where you want to make sure that you reword your main idea, idea and restate appropriate evidence. In the learning plan, you have the opportunity to write a letter to the editor or to write an opinion piece to the DC Council about a piece of policy. If you are not able to follow the learning plan, by all means, choosing somebody or something to write about regarding your opinion is limitless. Just pick up a piece of pencil. Just pick up a pencil and a piece of paper or open that Word document and get started. I drafted this in a Word document, but it is fine if you are using a notebook piece of paper. You want to be clear that you are writing this in a timely fashion, so make sure that when you write this and from the time that you send it, it is in a reasonable time frame. I put the date on the top left corner, and then I put the greeting. After you figured out your date, you want to make sure that you identify your greeting. Greetings do not always have to start with dear. Another way to greet is to whom it may concern. Usually this happens when you don't have a point of contact and you still want to remain polite in your letter. So you can begin with dear or sir or madam. Once you have completed your greeting, you can move into writing out your letter. Now you want to take away the scaffolds of the graphic organizer and you want to write in paragraph form. You want to make sure that your topic sentences are clear and you have obvious transitions between topic or reasonings. 
Lastly, for the persuasive writing and opinion writing, you want to have a st strong closing. So make sure that your closing and your, or your call to action is present at the end of the letter. Then we will transition into the closing. You may find yourself going back through the writing process as you work on your letter. But in the closing, you want to make sure that you send off your reader warmly. So, here's a few suggestions. Best regards, thank you, with appreciation, with sincere thanks. It has been an absolute joy to bring you editing and revising tips and also persuasive and opinion writing. Please continue to stay home and stay safe. If you would like more information or more resources, please visit WTULocal6.net and the Distance Learning tab. It's been great. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Welcome to this morning's program. My name is Miss C and I am your host. It is time for the warm up visual art and motion district wide edition. For more information on anything pertaining to art, please visit misscclass.com immediately following this program. Really excited because I asked you last week to focus on hashtagging Miss C Class TV if you wanted to feature your obscured art because last week's lesson focused on entropy and obscured artwork. So now we're going to see awesome examples from various individuals who took the initiative to dare to be different and dream big. So we have some entries from New York as well. So look very carefully at the first one. Hmm. Our first stop is Miss Irvin. Yes, fourth and fifth grade teacher from J.O. Wilson Elementary School. J.O. Wilson Elementary School, fifth grade teacher, Miss Irvin, did a phenomenal job at allowing her students to express themselves through art creatively. If you look closely, each snack represents a planet. We have Earth, Mercury, and includes the sun. This is incredible. What do you see the cherry representing in this instance? Hmm. Keep looking closely. This is a fun way to actually put a little snack plate together. So I just wanted to spotlight J.O. Wilson for encouraging their educators to dare to be different. Wheeler Avenue Elementary coming in next from New York City, New York. Yes, courtesy of a fifth grader, Anaya. This is incredible. Anaya's parents submitted an entry that Anaya used for Spirit Week. If you look very carefully, it's obscured art. I'm really excited about this one in particular, so you're going to see a small video a little bit later. Hashtag Miss C Class TV if you would like to be featured in next week's episode. But this spotlight is going to Miss Good. Miss Good is an educator in Ward 7 who works diligently with elementary school students. I'm really proud of Miss Good because she's not only featuring the works of her fifth grader and her second grader with optical illusions, but she's working diligently to make sure that you know you can find good art sessions at goodart underscore session yes that is her ig handle make sure you tag miss good follow miss good because she has wonderful ideas that she would like to share with you on optical illusions and it's awesome now because miss c is teaching visual arts with a math component i wanted to make sure i highlighted miss good as she showcases her work cherry blossom season is here you to look really carefully at these awesome cherry blossom illustrations and portraits and paintings created by the only middle school of its kind. Yes, you guessed it, Brooklyn Middle School, the only DCPS middle school for the arts. And I wanted to highlight Stevie J. She did a phenomenal job at making sure that her cherry blossom was a true unique reflection as to what held true to her. Now let's get ready for the lesson. Are you ready? Today's lesson is going to be phenomenal. We're going to focus on various things, but as always, hashtag Miss C Class TV if it's something you would like to share in the immediate future. It's time to get started. Are you ready? Here we go. Before we get started, please set up your workspace. 
materials, paper, pen, pencil, and of course, turn up the volume to your TV. During the session, you want to be able to hear everything that's happening. Write your response on paper. It can be a do now, exit ticket, and various tasks that I will give you throughout this session. And of course, after the lesson, you can hashtag your work with your parents' permission, Miss C Class TV, or allow your parents to hashtag Miss C Class TV to possibly be featured on the next episode. Now, Miss C Class Lessons on TV Etiquette is as follows. The instructional lesson, you should be in a quiet place and make sure you're sharing information with your parents. Always believe you can empower yourself, commit to your goals, and succeed by taking authority over your work. Please make sure you take your work very seriously because it can be featured and it will be a reflection of you. Lesson two, agenda. Let's do it, we're in lesson two. I'm so excited. Expectations of this class, one minute overview. You can actually go through the rest. The most important part is that you just do your best. Today's objective, we are going to brainstorm multiple approaches and combine ideas in order to understand value while creating a design problem in obscured art. Good job, yes, this is like part two of the previous lesson. Vocabulary review, entropy, measurement of disorder. And who remembers what obscured art meant? Hmm, I'll let you decide or do some research on that definition. Look at your vocabulary wall. Are you ready for the do now? Great, let's get started. Are you ready for the do now? Okay, how do you calculate the impact of growth? Write it in your notebook. How do you calculate the impact of growth? Or ask yourself, how do you define change? The best way to think of this is to consider your obscured art from last time. For example, let's think about the nationwide unemployment claims. All right, so how do you calculate the impact of growth? Hmm, how do you calculate the impact of growth? Let's think about the 90 degree angles that we referred to last time. If you notice this chart, you see a 90 degree angle, but we should read what this chart is about. It's the nationwide unemployment claims. How do you define change in this instance? How do you measure disorder? How is the 90 degree angle in this instance depicted? The illustration shows that something could be said about how you can calculate the impact of growth. But then how do we define growth? Calculating the impact of growth to define change. How do you calculate impact of growth? And then we have, how do you define change? If you notice in green, it's calculate impact and define change. That's right, we're forming an equation here. It can be plus or minus because growth can be in either direction for the positive and sometimes for the negative. But of course today we're going to concentrate on the positive. So here's a tip. Getting started, I want you to think of your approach. To compute this computation, you need quantitative or qualitative data. Or you can consider that variable as calculating impact plus or minus defined change equals qualitative or quantitative data. You're like, say what, Missy? I'm trying to do art. Okay, I am too. So let's build our vocabulary wall. First and foremost, we need to understand exactly what I am talking about. <laughs> so quantitative data. It can be counted, measured, and expressed using numbers. Quantitative, measured using numbers, counted, ah, okay, you know what I mean. Take a moment to write this down. Next, qualitative. Qualitative, descriptive and conceptual, hey, it's a cute jingle. You'll remember it, watch. Descriptive and conceptual, qualitative. 
using quantitative or qualitative data may help you satisfy the solution to this problem. Here's your first task. Please write your own definition of change. That's right, what is your definition for change? Everyone says things change, but what does that mean? Change for good, change for bad, change for the better. I want you to think of your definition of change. Write it down. Your next task, please create your own rubric for growth. It may be three levels, great increase, little increase, no increase. Three, two, one. It's just to give you a rubric to support your methodological approach, which is really just saying the way you're going to calculate impact and define change, quantitative or qualitative data. Here's an example. In this video, you see Anaya, she's drawing. And of course, this is awesome work, but I want you to pay close attention to what's changing, what's happening. Is something increasing? Is it decreasing? Is this qualitative data or quantitative data? What is going on here? Can we even calculate a drawing? Great question. I'm glad I asked, but I want you to ask the questions. So as we revert back to the basics, let's take positive growth and change. Let's take a moment for this like teacher, like student spotlight. This individual chose option C. They wanted to identify their approach using obscured art to launch a campaign by calculating the impact of growth to define change. Option C is the on-demand free choice option that I will always give you when fulfilling a task in any lesson. Everything in Ms. C class is 100% student directed. So with your input, I can help the lesson become unique to you. It's all about differentiation because we're all creative and unique in our own way. So Jalen came up with the flash and dash campaign. Jalen, are you there? I want you to explain to everyone, what is hashtag flash and dash? Got a new brand coming out called Jalen Brand. You know, this is drip right here. Let me get it right for you. This is drip right here. You see the gliding, you see the gliding. Then you, you know I always keep one on decks. So there you know. I mean, well, let me show you what flash and dash means. Do a crossover right here. It's just it's some simple. But then on this next play, after these two possessions coming out, you got to do something flashy in a quick amount of time. So, like, when you watch this play, I'm coming down, throw a behind the back pass. That's something flashy. It's kind of difficult. That's all you got to do. And the time limit is at like 10 p.m. I expect people to tag it doing something flashy. During the coronavirus time, you can do something flashy in the house, anything, and just tag it to me. You may get a free shirt. I may do a giveaway. Stay tuned. Good job. Jalen is a natural. You see this? He's talking about the hashtag flash and dash campaign. And make sure you actually pay attention because this is real. Real world experiences in Miss C class. I'm really excited about this. So Jalen is promoting something he created in art. Yes, yes in art class. I actually had the opportunity to work with him using digital art technology. He created his own brand and now you can follow him on IG at the Jalen brand and hashtag flash and dash. You have until April 30th to make that happen. Now, how can you become a Missy class all-star? First, create a list of materials that you need, just like Jalen did. And think about exactly how you can be creative with promoting growth, change, and identifying obscured art to make a positive impact in society, of course. Because in most instances, when you make a connection with your art, it makes people feel special and empowered. And even though you may be young, you have great leadership abilities. Let's bring it to life. As you create your list of materials, please think about if it's qualitative or quantitative data. And then make sure you share your art. Woo! You always want to take time to share your art. <laughs> because as I said before, art is in your heart. As you saw earlier, Anaya is inspiring others and she's in fifth grade, but she's inspiring others through her art. And Jalen, he's inspiring others to overcome their current circumstances 
in this pandemic to play with basketball. Hashtag flash and dash, show your greatest moves. And he's gonna let you choose and you may actually be chosen to be a part of Jalen's campaign. A few things to remember. Please remember that it's so important to collect the data. You want to ensure that the data you collect supports qualitative or quantitative. The main reason is because you want to measure it and compute it on a scale. That's going to help you determine your impact and how you are able to grow using art. Okay, so to continue this review, we're going to build our vocabulary wall. Let's go back to the beginning. Quantitative. Your data will be able to be counted like Jayla's campaign based on how many people hashtag flash and dash. Qualitative. Descriptive and conceptual. Just like Anaya, her work was very descriptive and conceptual. And based on evidence, her art is now inspiring others. Task. You were asked to create your own definition for change. This is very important to create your own definition for change because change means something different to everyone. Create your own rubric for growth. No increase could be level one. Little increase could be level two. Great increase, level three. But you don't even have to use these terms. You can change it. Just giving an example. It's now time for the exit ticket. Option A, option B, option C. Will you be working with qualitative data? If so, assess your work with your family or quantitative data. You can share with us, hashtag Miss C Class TV. Option C, free choice, propose an email, tv at misscclass.com. Make sure you take your work really seriously because I will definitely review it. Which approach will you use to calculate growth or change in the real world? Thank you so much for sharing this moment with me today and sharing your artwork. For visual art support, please call 1-844-933-1922 or to schedule a parent conference. Feel free to text Miss C Class to 31996. That's Miss C Class to 31996. Remember, believe, commit, succeed at misscclass.com.